Hello, um, we are doing uh, multiplying and dividing fractions and mixed numbers today. This is Ms. Hall. And Ms. Nelson. And um, let's just get started. You should already have this glued into your journal. So, multiplying fractions. So, open it up. Um, when we're multiplying fractions, we do not need to get a common denominator. We don't have to do it. You would get the same answer if you did, but it's a whole lot more work. So the first thing we're going to do is cross redu reduce. So when I look over here at my problem, by cross reduce, this is what cross means. Here to here and these two. So I know that two goes into both four and six. Two goes into four two times, two goes into six, three times. I also know that three goes into both three and fifteen. Three goes into three once, three goes into fifteen five times. Yeah. Okay, I'm checking myself. And so I've cross reduced. So now I'm going to multiply the numerator by the numerator and multiply the denominator by the denominator. And always with fractions, simplify if possible. So I'm multiplying my numerator by the num numerator, so th 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 5 is 10. I cannot simplify. Now, something I will tell you about this, if you are kind of lost with what Ms. Hall just said, um, you can always just multiply your numerators first. So you could do your 6, or I'm sorry, your 3 times your 6 and get 18, and then your 4 times your 5 and get 60. 4 times 15. I'm sorry, 4 times 15, I'm sorry, and get 60. From that point, you can then simplify. And if you break that down as small as it'll go, you should get to your 3 tenths as an answer. You will see she and I, we cross reduce first just because it's easier and your numbers get smaller first, but you can always do it at the very end. Just always, always simplify. That's a place that people mess up on. They don't always simplify. So either way, you choose the method that works for you, but you will see us cross reduce when we're doing problems with you. So while Ms. Nelson was talking, I actually did the problem, the original, uh, without cross reducing. So you see 3 times 6 is 18, 4 times 15 is 60. I know 6 goes into both 18 and 60, so I did simplify, and you can see I got the same answer. So multiplying, I like to do numerator times numerator over denominator times denominator. Just as a little cheat, you know that's what you're doing. You're cross multiplying across, and remember, you do not need to get common denominators. Okay, let's do dividing. We're dividing our fractions. So, again, we do not need common denominators. So, we're going to keep, change, flip. So, keep, change, flip. So what that means is you keep your first fraction the same, and I'm going to rewrite the whole thing. Please take the time to rewrite your whole problem. I see a lot of students who try to do all these little notations up here and without writing it over. Trust me, it will save you time in the long run to go ahead and write it over and not get yourself confused. Right, Ms. Nelson? Correct. So I'm going to keep my first fraction the same. I'm going to change. Um, this division to multiplying, and I'm going to flip my second fra fraction. So she is just switching the numerator and the denominator at that point. Right. So now I'm going to cross reduce. Remember, if you do your math correct, if you um, do not cross reduce, you will still get the correct answer. So cross reduce. I'm looking at 4 and 12. I know, I mean, 8 and 12, I know 4 goes into both of those, so 4 goes into 8 two times, 4 goes into 12 three times. Now I'm looking at 3 and 9, I know 3 goes into both of those, um, 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 three times. 
Now I'm going to do finish just like, what did I do? No, you can cancel again. Oh, I can cancel again? Um, Miss Nelson pointed out to me that I have 3 over 3 now on this side, and what is what does that become? Any number over itself, remember, comes our big 1. So this actually becomes a 1. So now we have 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, and our answer is 1 half. So to fill in our words over here, once we do our keep change flip, we're going and cross reduce, we're going to multiply the numerator by the numerator and multiply the denominators by each other and simplify if possible. So again, if you don't want to cross reduce, just multiply across and you can simplify after you're finished. Okay, so moving on, we're going to do multiply mixed numbers, okay? So when we multiply our mixed numbers, same thing that we just said, you do not need to get a common denominator. Anytime you multiply or divide, you do not need a common denominator. If you try to get one, you are just complicating the situation for yourself. So back to what we did earlier, you are going to change these back into improper fractions. The reason we are doing this, there is no rule of how to multiply a mixed number with a mixed number. You physically cannot do it. Y'all don't know what to do with your whole numbers. So we are going to use around the world, just like we did on the lesson before this. Two, I'm sorry, five times two is 10, plus four is 14 fifths, times three times seven is 21, 21 plus four is 25 sevenths. Okay, so now I'm going to cross reduce if possible. So I look and see, I know that 5 and 25 share a 5. So 5 goes into 5 one time, 5 goes into 25 five times. Again, 7 and 14 share a 7. 7 goes into 7 once, 7 goes into 14 twice. Going back again to your rules, you're going to multiply the numerator and multiply the denominator, so I have 2 times 5 is 10, 1 times 1 is 1, and you always simplify if possible. So 10 over 1, that is an improper fraction. We can never leave a fraction improper. So any number over 1 is always just that number. So our answer will be 10. So if we go over here to dividing, Again, go back to your always. You do not need common denominator. So we're going to change to improper fractions first by doing around the world. So 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14 thirds, divided by two, 9 times 2 is 18, 18 plus 4 is 22 ninths. So now you have to keep change and flip okay before we can actually multiply so I'm going to rewrite it again like Miss Hall said I'm going to rewrite the entire process because if I don't I am more than likely going to make a mistake so I keep my first fraction 14 thirds change that division to a multiplication and I'm going to flip my second fraction around on top of itself so now I'm going to cross reduce again and again, if you do not like that, just multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and simplify. So I know that 3 and 9 share a 3. So I'm going to divide both. That should be a 1, not a 3. That's where my 3 comes from. <laughs> 14 and 22, I know 2 goes into both of them. So if I divide them by 2, that's 7. That gets me 11. I know that 3 won't go with 11. 7 won't go with 11. So now I'm going to finish up by just multiplying across. 7 times 3 is 21. 1 times 11 is 11. So again, an improper fraction. So I have to go back and I have to simplify. So, like I showed you earlier, if you can't, if you don't know what this is, set it up in division. So 11 into 21, I know it goes one time, which is 11. I have 10 remainder. So when my remainder becomes my numerator, my outside number becomes my denominator. 
So my answer is 1 and 10 11. So 10 and 11 has nothing in common. Okay, so just to briefly um, recap, when you're multiplying um, your fractions, you're multiplying your numerators, and then you're multiplying your denominators. When you're um, dividing, you're going to do your keep, change, flip. Then you're going to um, multiply just like you did. You, you're going to multiply like you did when you're multiplying. Okay, thank you. Bye.